Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's day is off to a great start. I'm thankful to be in the land of the living this morning. I'm thankful to be amongst the living this morning. I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me another chance. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Grace Amber. I come on different platforms whenever God gives me a word to share. I come on and I share it with you. So really quick this morning, happy Friday. Thank God it is Friday. I want to talk to you guys really quick this morning from the topic of a sacred day. From the topic of a sacred day what am i talking about today let's jump in so um how many of y'all remember um in school how you learned about how scientists um would run experiments let's say they wanted to reach a desired outcome for example let's say that they're running an experiment to see if they can develop a medication um to combat some kind of germ or virus or something like that. And so what they would do is they would run experiments. And in running those experiments, what they were trying to do is to find something that worked and was successful. What they were trying to do is to find something, if they're trying to find a cure for a disease or a virus, what they would do is run experiments to see if what they had would actually be successful and fighting the virus or the disease or curing the disease or curing the virus or whatever it might be the germ whatever their experiment was and their desired outcome was the bottom line is they did the same thing and it had the same purpose and what they're looking for is to find something that was successful and doing what they wanted it to do right well oftentimes satan works the same way he runs experiments on us right to see what works and what doesn't work so if he wants to get you upset and riled up and all frazzled and knotted up as my friend will call it then he's going to run experiments on you he's going to study you just like a scientist would to see what works and what doesn't work and whatever works that's what he is going to continue to do if a scientist runs an experiment they try a medication they run an experiment and try the medication to see if it's successful in combating this germ or this disease or this virus and if it's actually successful guess what they're going to do they're going to continue to keep doing the same thing because they found that it works so if it is working there's an old saying if it ain't broke don't fix it let's talk about the immune system right because how does the immune system work so when your immune system is healthy is working at its optimum level right or its optimum capacity what what does the immune system do it combats disease it combats invaders that come into your body or try to come into your body so when your immune system is healthy it's working at its best you're not immunocompromised you don't have any kind of immune uh, system deficiency then guess what happens when something tries to come against your body your immune system does what it was designed to do and what it does is it fights those invaders i remember when i was in nursing school and they would show uh little um videos to try to give you a visual of what the immune system looks like in action and so when a germ tries or something or a foreign invader as they would call it would try to come into your body they would show us visuals uh to see what it looks like when your immune system goes into action right the the invader comes in and it triggers your immune system your immune system says something is not right here what are you who are you you have no business being in our environment right and so the immune system goes into action combats that thing and you may be tired your body may go through some changes while your immune system is doing what it does but when your immune system is at its best and it is functioning properly guess what happens when things try to come against your body the immune system combats that and your defenses are up that is what it was designed for Let's look at when your immune system is weakened or when your immune system is deficient, when you are immunocompromised, what happens? Your immune system is down. Your defense is down. So guess what happens when your defense is down? When something tries to come into your body, a foreign invader, a foreign substance, a foreign germ, a foreign virus, a foreign cell, whatever it is, something comes into your body to infect you, to come against your body, when your immune system 
system is compromised or you're immunosuppressed, something is not right, immunocompromised, guess what happens? Your immune system is weakened. So when your immune system is weakened, guess what happens? When these things try to come against your body, the immune system cannot fight it the way that it was designed to. And so we understand from that concept that when you are weakened or when something is weakened, the defenses are down, right? So when we look at that and we look at the concept and the understanding and the premise that when something is weakened, it cannot defend itself at its best, then guess what? It is the same thing that applies to us. Satan studies us. He has known us for a long time. You look at the story of Job where he looked at Job and he already knew everything about Job. When, uh, when, when he went with the angels to God when it came to Job, he already knew. Don't you have a hand fence of protection around Job? How did he know that? Because he studied Job. He ran experiments on Job and he knew that Job had a hedge fence of protection around him. So what was, Satan desire, what was Satan's desired result? was to get the hedge fence, the defense down, right? So that he could then attack Job. And he wanted him weakened so that he could attack Job at his weak moment. And then he felt like he would get the desired result that he wanted. He does the same thing uh, with many of us. There are spirits that have been sent on assignment to aggravate you, to frustrate you, to get you frazzled, to get you angry. These things were sent on assignment because Satan studies you and often knows us better than we know ourselves. So he knows what upsets you. He knows what aggravates you. He knows what doesn't work against you. And he's always trying to work and run experiments on us to see what works and what doesn't work. The old saying says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So when Satan understands you and what works against you, he is very um, predictable. So when he looks at what works against you, he keeps running that same play back all the time. It's like a game. And when you, the same team, when you say, let's just use an example here. Let's say Golden State plays against the Cleveland Cavaliers, right? Let's say that Golden State plays against Cleveland, right? What happens here? Uh, they play every year. And when there's the same players on bro both teams, it becomes predictable. When they find something that has worked and has been tried and true over and over and over again, they're going to keep running them same plays. Why? Because the plays have been working all along. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So Satan comes to you. It's the same trick, just a different day. Same demon, same spirit, just a different face, right? And he does this every single day. Why does he do this? We talked about a fence for the last couple of days, and we understand. Now, Satan likes to use offense because when he comes and presents us with offense, oftentimes we respond in a way that is not pleasing to God. Of course, we can repent, but he loves to use that because it is effective. Well, here's the deal. Satan also does not want to just attack your peace. He doesn't just want to get you out of right standing with God and offend you. He also wants to attack your praise. But here's something else that he wants to attack. He wants to attack your joy. Let me give you some scripture here. Nehemiah, uh, the 8th chapter, the 10th through the 12th verse, NLT translation here. And Nehemiah continued, go and celebrate with the feast of rich foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And the Levites too quieted the people telling them, hush, don't weep. For this is a sacred day. So the people went away to eat and drink um, at a festive meal to share gifts of food and to celebrate with great joy because they had heard God's words and understood them. Nehemiah said this is a sacred day. Don't weep. Don't cry. Don't get all of your feelings. Don't be sad. Don't be angry. This is a sacred day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so many times Satan wants to come 
and weaken you. And how can he weaken you by attacking your joy? Why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. I want you to go out today. And some of you are in situations and relationships. These things may be going on at home. It may be going on with your neighbors. It may be going on on your job. It may be going on in relationships with your friendships, relationships, intimate relationships, your spouse, whatever it may be. Satan has sent spirits out on assignment to frazzle you, to weaken you, to weaken you to the point where he can come in and get a good lick on you. Weaken you to the point where your defenses are down and then he can have a field day with you. I want you to make it up in your mind today that no matter what anybody does to try to upset you, frazzle you, get you wound up, get you knotted up as my friend would say, get you out of character, get you out of position, get you out of right standing with God in the kingdom of God, right? Whatever spirit and whatever person, whatever entity, whatever thing, whatever tries to come against you today, I want you to make it your priority to protect your joy. See, we always talk about protect your peace, guard your heart, protect your peace. Yes, all those things are good. But the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so what God calls us to do is to not only guard our heart, not only protect our peace at all costs, but I want you to make it your priority to look at today and every day moving forward, particularly when you are under attack, I want you to make it your priority and your goal that every day that you are dealing with someone who means you harm, every day that you are dealing with pestilence in the form of people, places and or things, whatever it is that you're dealing with, Satan wants you to get your defenses down. He wants to weaken you because he understands that when he weakens you, you cannot fight for yourself. You cannot defend yourself. Your defenses are down. Your armor is down. You're supposed to have on the full armor of God and instead, yet you over there in the corner weakened. Why? Because he has attacked your praise. He has attacked your joy. And I want you to make it your priority today to wake up this morning and wherever you are going, whoever you are dealing with, I want you to make it your priority today to say this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. No, you will not upset me today. No, you will not anger me today. No, you will not frazzle me today. No, you will not upset me today. No, you will not sicken me and depress me today. Instead, I am going to not only guard my praise to my God, because God in habits the praises of his people i am not only going to guard my heart because that's what the word tells me to do i am not only going to guard my peace and protect my peace because it costs a lot to get it and i'm going to protect it but i'm also going to protect my joy today this is the day that the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it this is a sacred day no i will not mourn no i will not get aggravated no i will not cuss you out no, I will not knock you slam into next year. No, I will not go off on you. No, I will not go ball up in a corner and cry. No, I will not. I will be glad because this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And so Satan wants to get you down. He wants to weaken you so that you can become an easy prey. Don't allow him to do it. Not only protect your praise, not only protect your peace, not only protect your heart and guard your heart, but you also protect your joy because it is the joy of the Lord that is your strength. When you resist Satan and his tactics and the things that he continues to try to do to be a pestilence to you, to aggravate you, to irritate you, to get you out of character, to get you out of alignment, when he tries to play you like a fiddle, a fiddle the Bible says in James 4, 7, so humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Make it your priority and your goal. Make a vow to yourself and to God that you serve today, that no matter what comes, no matter who tries to come aggravate you, no matter who tries to get you out of character, make it your goal and make a vow and a promise to yourself today that you will not only protect your peace and guard your heart and protect your praise because God inhabits the praises of his people, but you're going to protect your joy because your joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Do not allow Satan to weaken you 
to the point that you become an easy prey for him. I love you. I hope that word blessed you today. Happy Friday. Thank God it's Friday. I hope you have a good weekend. I'll be right back on Monday. Good Lord willing with another word.